did you hear about our next stop? It's a world called Penacony. I hear it's a beautiful, dreamy place. I'm so excited. But Pom Pom said the banquet we were invited to is still a little ways off. Hmm, what can I do to pass the time? Huh? Is that my phone? Must be the group chat. Ignore Branya. Let's go to his room and talk to him. What the? Is this a letter? just not in the mood for idle chat. There's been a lot weighing on my mind since the Lo Fu. It was uh, tough on the spirit. Oh, Don Hung. I'm the one who should be sorry. I was being too pushy. You're right. You went through a lot on the Sienjo. Take all the time you need. Thank you for understanding. It's great that Bellabog is able to host the celebration. I hope your trip goes well. Say hi to our friends for me. Okay. Rest up. You're not allowed to miss the next Trailblaze expedition. <sighs> I'll be there next time. Uh, he won't budge, huh? Looks like it's just the two of us, then. Oh, pity. He's gonna miss out. We never get the chance to go on a stress-free adventure. And don't get yourself all worked up. If your Rillo 6 is strong enough to withstand a Stellaron, it'll be just fine. Oh, if only Himeko could come with us. Pom-Pom can't just leave the express whenever they feel like it. You didn't know? Seems like someone wasn't paying attention. Why don't we go ask Himeko to tag along? She might be up for an adventure. You've been on the express for a while now, but you've never gone on a trip with Himeko before, right? Well, now's your chance. March? That's a big smile on your face. What's the good news? Uh, Himeko! There's a celebration coming up on Urillo 6, organized by the Supreme Guardian, and we're invited to go take in the sights and sounds. Don Hung won't be going anywhere for a while. He's still resting up, so wanna come with us? I 
mean, considering how you helped us out with Kakolia, I'm sure Branya would be happy to see you. <laughs> ah, so that explains the grin. You're excited about the celebration. Thanks for the invite, but I'm afraid my hands are full right now. Please send my regards to the Supreme Guardian. Make the most of the festivities. You've earned it. You two and Don Hung did help save your Willow Six after all. I'll be sure to join you guys next time. Huh, navigators really do have their plates full, huh? Seems like it's just you and me this time. Well, let me go pack some stuff for the trip first. Come and find me when you're ready to set off. Pretty neat, right? It's actually not new. I just never had the right occasion to try it on. This kind of event doesn't come around every day. Why shouldn't I dress for the occasion? You're not really gonna wear that same old outfit, are you? Uh, let's just pretend I never said anything. As long as one of us is making an effort. Pajamas, hot water bottle, pom-pom doll. That should be everything. Let's go! Wow, that was fast. Don't you have anything you want to bring with you? travel light. But don't you at least need some pajamas? I was just taking a look at Mr. Yang's records, and it seems like your Willow 6's average temperature has warmed up quite a bit. It's much warmer than it was on our first trip there. I wouldn't call it livable just yet, but things are looking up. I'm so happy for Branya and Zila. Ready to go? <laughs> Bella Bog, here we come! <laughs> Bella Bog. Seven hundred years. <laughs> it's never too late to pick up the tab. For sure, though, where there's a celebration, there's bound to be food, right? <sighs> Come on, Bellabog. Don't let me down. Oh, wait a sec. That person over there, that doesn't look like a Silvermane Guard uniform. All in black. Surely they're not... IPC? On this world? Am I going crazy? The Interastral Peace Corporation. Who else? The one whose insignia is pretty much everywhere? That IPC! You still don't remember? Oh, what about Findy? That's one of their products. Oh, and the Interastral Peace Broadcast. You know the one always being played on the Express? Uh, never mind, it's not that important. The important question is, what are the IPC doing on Urillo 6? Hmm, there's only one way to find out. Let's go ask. I've always found IPC staff easy to talk to. Hi, do you work for the Interastral Peace Corporation? Or are you just dressing fancy today?
Boss, encounter with two unknowns. Want me to take him out? Over. Uh, take us out? Take them out? Uh, just hang tight for a second. I'm on my way. Don't do anything stupid. Glad to make your acquaintance. I'm Topaz, an investment expert from the Interastral Peace Corporation. I'm here on Eurilis 6 for a special business assignment. You'll have to forgive my colleague here. People skills aren't his strong suit. Please don't take it to heart. You! Oh, you scared the life out of me! We're here for the celebrations. We're not looking for more conflicts. Oh, right. We should probably introduce ourselves. I'm March 7th, a passenger of the Astral Express. You may have heard of it? And this is my friend and fellow passenger. <laughs> no kidding. I could tell you weren't locals from a mile away, but I didn't expect to run into two nameless here. Fate is such a curious thing. I heard that Eurillo 6 only stepped out of the Stellaron's shadow thanks to the direct intervention of the Trailblazers. Uh, surely you two aren't... Humble all of a sudden, huh? Are you feeling all right? Should I call a doctor? <laughs> I never imagined I'd run into living legends here. Must be your lucky day, huh, Numby? <laughs> wow, Miss Topaz, you're really young for an IPC executive. That's impressive. <sighs> More good luck, I suppose. But it's not as cushy as you think. Scurrying from one side of the galaxy to the other. Going wherever businesses require me to be. Huh. Your job sounds pretty similar to the express cruise. Aside from the business, I guess. Oh, Branya moves fast! The crisis is only just over and she's already opened talks with the IPC. <laughs> These... Talks aren't exactly what you might expect, but I have to agree. The Supreme Guardian definitely knows how to govern a city. And that's the reason I'm here on Eurillo 6, to meet with her. Uh, Miss March, you said you were on your way to Bellabog festivities, right? My apologies for delaying you both. <laughs> Don't be sorry. It's not like we're in a rush. Want to come to the city with us? The snow plains are freezing, and it's easier than you think to get lost out here. Thanks for the concern, but I'll manage. It's my first time on this world. I'd like to take it in its vast, iconic snowscape for just a little longer. Who knows? Maybe we'll cross paths again during the celebrations. Oh, uh, here's my contact information. I don't usually respond during work hours, but I'd be happy to chat off the clock. Wow. Well, I actually managed to get an IPC executive's phone number without even trying. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you two make a cute pair. Uh, anyway, I'd better be on my way. See you next time. The universe is huge, yet we somehow stumbled onto the same path. <laughs> Fate truly works in mysterious ways, don't you think? <laughs> Come on, let's head into the city. Wow, there are people everywhere. Are you sure we're in Bellabog? And now to check out the main event! The food! Come on, keep up! Hang on a sec! Isn't that Wallace up ahead? Looks like he's finally made some friends. I wonder what they're talking about. Me? Oh, I'm still going through Peru. 
Albert, uh, why don't you tell everyone how you were released from jail so quickly? Selling cultural relics and impersonating Silvermane guards are both heinous crimes. Well, it was all thanks to my uncle, you know. Ah, I remember. Your uncle is Minister Knoll. He heads up the Department of Transportation, no? <laughs> uh, yes, you, you knew that too. <laughs> You're shameless, Norbert. Not to be rude, but if I were thrown in jail, I wouldn't possibly ask my father to bail me out. Do you think I wanted to? I'm not the type of person to abuse my status. Well, I don't really know about that. Get off my back, will you? I had to deal with hardened criminals in jail. Now that I'm free, my supposed friends are ganging up on me. Looks like things are getting heated. I think we'd better get out of here. Mr. Rossi, may I inquire as to... You know what? Uh, hey, quick! Sir Val's about to start singing! Heartbeats will shake me, so rules can't break me. Crank the sound and let your soul be free. you this way. I heard you left to go travel the galaxy. Oh, you're here for the Soul Warm Festival, right? The atmosphere is like no other. Silly me, where are my manners? Grab yourselves a sun cake each. Get them while they're hot. Hey, that's not fair. Get to the back of the line. Ever heard of first come, first served? Show a little respect. If it weren't for these two, we'd be eating geo marrow by now. Take a look at these beauties. These are the best sun cakes I've made all day. Oh, wow, they smell so good. They look so crispy and crunchy. Oh, I think I'm in love. <laughs> well, don't wait for them to get cold now. Sorry, sweethearts, I'd best see to these other customers before their hunger gets the better of them. Thanks for stopping by. Ah, phew. Who'd have thought just taking a stroll could be so tiring? Say, I think we should probably pay Branya a visit. After all, she was the one who invited us here. Or we could go check out some other fun stuff elsewhere. <laughs> Your call. I understand the difficulties that this world is facing, Supreme Guardian. Bellabog's current financial burden cannot be pinned on you, nor anyone else for that matter. However, objectively speaking, since Bellabog has existed as an independent entity to this day, its debt cannot simply be written off. Oh, it looks like we have some visitors. Branya! And Topaz? You're here too? I guess you've already started your business talks. We'll get out of your way if... It's no bother. We've pretty much wrapped things up already anyway. <sighs> Please consider my plans carefully, Supreme Guardian. 
If Urelo 6 wants to rebuild its connections with the rest of the galaxy, your credit record with the IPC will be of great importance. You've made yourself clear, Miss Topaz. I'll require some time to consider my next course of action. Naturally. However, while you're deliberating, my colleagues will need to carry out some operations in Bellabog. I hope that your subjects in the underworld are cooperative. I'm sorry our business got in the way of a reunion with old friends. I'll get out of your way. Right, Branya? I didn't know Miss Topaz was so intense. She seemed nice when we met her. It's good to see you two again. Welcome back to Bellabog. I planned a special reception, but I had to deal with an unexpected guest. The lady you just witnessed, she claims to represent the IPC. There's no need to keep either of you in the dark. To tell the truth, I have too much weighing on my mind right now to even think about the Psalmworm Festival. Uh, since you've already made her acquaintance, I needn't explain who she is. I'm sure you've heard pieces of Bellabog's history the first time you visited. The Legion's invasion 700 years ago, how the Stellaron brought about the Eternal Freeze. It seems that much of Bellabog's history from that time was buried deep beneath the snow. Those memories were lost and weren't passed down to the subsequent generations of Supreme Guardians. Topaz shared with me the story of the Stellaron's descent upon Yarillo 6. How the original outsiders stationed here foresaw the impending disaster and chose to leave in large numbers. Among those outsiders were several investors from the Interastral Peace Corporation. Before they departed, they did something noteworthy. They sought out architects who refused to leave, those who insisted on defending their homes. The IPC provided these architects with significant funds to aid them against the coming disaster. It was with those funds that Bellabog was able to construct its immense walls. Even the initial funding for the development of the first batch of automatons was drawn from the same pool. Wow, that's a pretty incredible story. So, does that mean Topaz's business here is to collect a debt from Bellabog? Yes, I'm afraid so. That's ridiculous! And what's with the timing? What took them so long to get here? If it wasn't for us eliminating the Stellaron, they'd have nothing to collect. It's obvious they're just trying to take advantage. According to her account, the repayment period agreed upon by the architects and the IPC investors was 280 years. However, less than a century after the loan was taken out, the connection between Yarillo 6 and the rest of the galaxy was completely severed. The IPC deemed that the disaster had caused irreparable damage and that there was no civilization left to reclaim the debt from. As such, they considered the owed sum permanently lost. It wasn't until the Stellaron crisis was resolved that the IPC discovered that Bellabog had survived. And that's when they sent Topaz over to collect the debt. And the interest. The debt owed is an astronomical amount. I don't even know how to read such a long string of numbers. Before you both arrived, Topaz warned me that if the payments were delayed, the IPC would give her the authority to employ strong measures. Oh, I had no idea things were like this. Here I was thinking the IPC had come to rebuild Bellabog, not extort it. Uh, right. We need to figure out how to help them. The IPC is too big and powerful. Even if Branya steps in, it'll be hard for her to resolve the situation. 
You seem to have a deeper knowledge of the Interastral Peace Corporation than I do. But if the records are accurate, and they truly have a presence throughout the galaxy, the IPC could crush Bellabog like a bug if they wanted to. I'm glad you're both here. I know you came for the festival, but now... Now, I must ask you and the Astral Express for help. Do you think you could persuade Topaz to reevaluate the situation? The Express's reputation precedes it. Perhaps there's still hope? Have no fear, Branya. When a friend's in need, the Nameless will always be at their side. <laughs> yeah, after all, this guy here is a pretty good negotiator. Thank you so much, both of you. I'm so sorry for dragging you into more trouble. While you're out looking for Topaz, I'll see if I can think of a strategy to deal with the situation. Best of luck, and stay safe. where she is. She seems like the type of person who appreciates a straight approach. You again. This is the third time today we've run into each other. Oh, did my smart reply function tell you where I was? It's a system developed by the technology department. Pretty neat, right? What do you make of this painting? I'm no expert, but just from the artist's strokes, I can tell it's no ordinary piece. It portrays a certain kind of uh, sorrow, you know? Not your everyday kind of sadness. It runs much deeper than that. It's as if the artist had condensed history into one poignant but sorrowful image. The artist's brushwork depicts a generation's, no, several generations' hardships. <laughs> you flatter me. The Express has visited many worlds. I'm sure the Nameless have a far greater knowledge of such things than myself. I suppose what I'm trying to say is 
what I'm drawn to isn't the style in which a piece is painted, but its overall value. Its intrinsic value may only be 50,000 credits, but its added value might push the total up to 200,000. Uh, sorry for crashing your artist party, but we came to talk to you about something else. Oh? A collaboration between our two sides, perhaps? Not exactly. Actually, we... Let's walk and talk. This way. Most exhibits in this museum are of little value. But, with a keen eye, it's possible to find a diamond in the rough, so to speak. Miss Topaz, Branya's already told us about Bellabog's debt situation. Oh. You two are closer than I expected with her. So, how can I help? Not sure in the arrangement, or... We, uh, uh, help me out here. You know I'm not good at this kind of thing. <laughs> You're so direct. I like that. I understand. From your point of view, I can see how unreasonable it appears. However, you must understand that debt collection is a big part of my job. I've dealt with cases far more difficult than Bellabog's. I appreciate each case has its difficulties, but if I treated every late debtor as a special case, the galaxy's economy would come to a grinding halt. The Strategic Investment Department is well-versed in handling such situations. We can offer the debtor various repayment solutions, but Urillo 6 has far exceeded the allotted repayment period. I'm afraid milder solutions aren't the order of the day. So, I propose to Branya. Oops, oh, almost gave away trade secrets there, didn't I? Oh, that was a close one. Uh, the exhibits here are pretty ordinary. I estimate they're probably not worth much. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, so you're basically saying the Bellabogians must pay off their ancestors' debts. When you think about it, it's just another part of the cycle of life. Uh, I'm not sure it's as poetic as that. <gasps> wow, look! Is that little critter native to Urillo 6? Oh, it's so white and fluffy. <laughs> Where can I find a live one? I absolutely adore them. <laughs> Have you guys met Numbi yet? Oh, where'd they go? They must be off playing somewhere. Hmm, come to think of it, this little guy's on display here probably means it's already extinct, right? So, Miss Topaz, what exactly will it take for the IPC to go easier on Bellabog? Branya invested so much just to make this world a little better. And now, it feels like all of her efforts will be undone in the blink of an eye. It's just so cruel. <laughs> what do you take the IPC for, Miss March? We're just the same as Bellabog's architects. We're all followers of the preservation. No matter what solutions we propose, we will always take the welfare of the people of Bellabog into consideration. Otherwise, we'd be no different from the Legion, would we? So you're saying there's nothing to worry about? But Branya... Don't worry yourself too much. The Supreme Guardian is a wise person. She'll understand. But to answer your question directly, it'd take a miracle. I'll complete the Arillo 6 project no matter what obstacles I encounter. Uh, this isn't going as planned. What should we do? I wouldn't waste too much energy on this matter. Why not make the most of the festive atmosphere? Oh, looks like one of my colleagues is after me. My apologies, but I should probably take this. What now? We spent ages 
trying to convince her and she didn't move an inch. I guess so, but that still doesn't fix Branya's problem. I guess Miss Topaz is just doing her job. And as far as the Express is concerned, I think it'd be unwise to make the IPC our enemy. <sighs> All these vested interests. It's so hard to undo any of it. They teach this stuff in school. <sighs> oh, wait, did I even go to school? Did someone send you a message? causing trouble in the underworld? Already? Uh, seriously? Topaz was just talking about taking the welfare of the people of Bellabog into consideration. Uh, now they're pulling this stunt? You really can't trust these money-hungry IPC suits for a minute. Uh, I really did jinx us. I don't think I have it in me to play the hero today. I guess complaining won't get us anywhere. Let's go lend them a hand. It's getting late. Where to now? Zila! Hey! Am I glad to see you two here? I'm not sure how much longer we can hold out. It's bad. Really bad. Their weapons and automatons are much stronger than anything we have. Nobody's been seriously hurt, but a few Wildfire members got minor injuries. Fortunately for us, it seems like they were holding back. You see those two in black? They've been guarding the mine entrance. They're not letting anyone in or out. Hey! Just because you have fancy equipment doesn't mean you can bully us. Who do you think you are? What's the matter? Got nothing to say? What's going on inside the mine? Any ideas? A few miners made it out earlier. They looked pretty panicked. They said the whole mine had been seized by the people in black. These uninvited guests keep talking about asset evaluation. Whatever that means. All I know is that they're seriously disrupting the lives of the Underworlders. Uh, who? We were just talking to her in the museum. Do you think her cronies are acting without her authorization? The person you're talking about, are they in charge of the people in black? Potaz, Pazto, but whatever her name is, she can wait. Right now, the most important thing is to free those trapped in the Great Mine. Are you two with me? Hey, you two! Cat got your tongue or something? If you knew what was best for you, you'd get out of my way. You guys must be exhausted standing here all day. How about you take a little lunch break? I'm sure the IPC allows that, right? Uh, what's their deal? You two were talking to the director in the Snow Plains. Uh, so it's you! You're the one who was threatening to take us out in the Snow Plains! 
Uh, do you even know who you're talking to? If your boss knows to treat us with respect, you'd better start showing some yourself. I can't let you pass. My team leader said that if anyone gets through, I'll lose six months of performance bonuses. Team leader? <laughs> You're even lower on the pecking order than I thought. Sh shut up! I spent seven years on a forsaken asteroid preparing to join the IPC. I went through 17 interviews before they finally hired me. What right do you deadbeats have to criticize me? IPC? Interviews? I don't know what you're rambling on about, but you're really testing my patience. No need to waste our breath on this idiot. Let's do this. I'm afraid. Try harder. There's no time to lose. Conflict is endless. No mercy. That's better. Save it for your own skin. Lance ablaze. Lance! There's no time to lose. <laughs> time for a shot. Nap time. A blade of moonlight. I'm on guard. Naughty children, don't listen. Savor the vigor of it. <laughs> That's it? He sure took off quickly. <sighs> Fifteen rounds of interviews and these are the best people they can find? Huh, what a joke. Ugh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I've been warned that the ones in the mine won't go down without a fight. Let's set off when you're ready. Caught your breath yet? It's time to show these IPC fools who they're dealing with. Right after we finished chatting with Topaz in the museum? <laughs> Did it take you that long to notice? I thought you were supposed to be the observant one. The quicker we handle the IPC, the faster we can get back to enjoying the celebrations. Let Zila know when you're ready to go. Ready for action? It's time to kick the IPC out of the underworld. Let's get moving. Hello, it's Mr. Sparog, isn't it? And this cute little girl must be Clara. Uh, hello, miss. Are you... I'm Topaz. I've come to have a chat with Mr. Sparog. Clara, go inside and wait for me. Huh? But if you have a guest, maybe I should... She is not a guest. Neither is she a friend. Go, Clara. Everything will be fine. Oh, it seems my source was right. 
Who would have thought that such a strong bond could exist between a giant robot and a little girl? <sighs> so heartwarming. You bear the insignia of the Interastral Peace Corporation. What is your motive for coming here? <laughs> Straight to the point, huh? I like your style. Urillo 6. Are robots familiar with that term? Anyway, it refers to the planet we're currently standing on. It's about to become the property of the IPC. No one can reverse this outcome. Not you, not the nameless, nor any power in the galaxy. I only care about one thing right now. Demonstrating to the shareholders of the IPC that Urillo 6 can generate value. In the long run, this is a way, the only way, to ensure Bellabog's long-term interests. I need your help to achieve this goal. Long-term interests undefined. Analyzing objectives. Analysis failed. Tell me, Emissary, how do you plan to convince the IPC leadership? That's simple. I'll show you. This is... Source code, or to be more precise, source code that is able to take control of all mechanized units in Bellabog. I'm sure you're familiar with this. All mechanized units manufactured in Bellabog over the last 700 years utilize the underlying systems created by the IPC. The code is so refined that the engineers never saw any reason to change it. I assume you're also aware that there was once a large automaton factory in the underworld. Thousands upon thousands of automatons, enough to crush the Legion's vanguard, lay dormant within. This is my bargaining chip for negotiating with the higher-ups. I'll convince them that Urillo 6 has a place in the company's long-term strategies. But first, I need a guide to show me where these automatons are buried. I understand. Your long-term interests can be defined as the survival of civilization at a macro level. What are your intentions for the people currently living here? Their future has already been purchased. All I can do is make them accept this fact, using a relatively peaceful approach. I understand. I will assist you with your plan. Oh, so you're not as stubborn as the rumors suggest. The future you speak of is beyond my computational range, but my emotional analysis indicates that you are indeed trying to find ways to ensure the survival of this world. Additionally, calculations indicate a 96.4% probability of compliance through force if I refuse to cooperate. <laughs> Your calculations are slightly on the conservative side. Here's to our future cooperation. If you wouldn't mind leading the way, Mr. Sparog. The miners here huddled together. Anyone else getting deja vu? Well, the situation here is pretty similar to when you first arrived. It's just that instead of a few thugs and broken robots, now we're dealing with much more formidable adversaries. Hey, check it out! Isn't that Topaz's little trotter over there? Oh, what was it again? Numbi, right? <laughs> what? Isn't that thing a fragmentum monster? She's keeping one as a pet? Uh, the IPC are all about their sci-fi sorcery, so it's not that surprising. Wanna go take a look? Sounds like you two are getting along. 
<laughs> What's Numby saying? <laughs> Seriously? You actually speak Trotter? Look, you guys. Looks like it wants to leave. Oh, looks like they want to find their master. Let's follow them. Help! Those people dressed in black are attacking us! Will of preservation! The moon shines on the truth. Hey, I'm talking to you. Where do you guys store the Geo Marrow? <laughs> I really don't know anything! This place is filled with nothing but incompetence. <sighs> Those cowards! I guess they want to do this the hard way! I sense a storm. Take more than medicine. story in your own way. Uh-huh. <laughs> Looks like Numby's in a good mood. Uh, but aren't they on the IPC side? Strange. Establishing threats. in charge. Let's go! Huh? Where'd Numby go? Wow. For something so short and stubby, they're surprisingly nimble. Well, I guess that's that. We're on our own now. Let's keep going.
the moon shines on the truth. Hey, you! Are you in charge around here? This is currently conducting acid evaluation work here. Local residents are advised to follow those responsible for evacuation to the... Don't lie to us! You seized the mine by force for yourself! You drove the locals out of their homes! I'm warning you. Get lost or suffer the consequences. Don't you dare show your face around here again! You mean? You have quite the attitude. This is our jurisdiction now. We are all powerful here. You know Topaz? Interesting. It doesn't matter. The Strategic Investment Department has no obligation to talk to anyone not related to this project. In cases where debtors fail to repay within the set time frame, the IPC reserves the right to skip negotiations and take over all assets. We're simply following the rules. What exactly is your problem? You know, it's funny how the rules always seem to work in your favor, don't you think? This world's been hanging by a thread, and now you're here to pull the plug on it! Don't blame me. I'm simply following orders. Do you think I get to make those kinds of decisions? <laughs> Save your breath, March. I never held out any hope of resolving this problem peacefully. Didn't you claim the IPC was all-powerful? <laughs> well, now's the perfect chance to show us what you can do. Uh, if I knew things were gonna get this heated, I'd have applied for overtime. <laughs> anyway, since you seem intent on settling this matter with violence, prepare yourself for my heavy labor gang. Do not be afraid. Search. Rise! Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. I'm first shot. Stand down. Run. 
Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Heaven search. Christ! I'm okay. That's better. Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> Just a little something. Times are changed. Lands at the ready. Hit. Finally, the end of it. Naughty child. Sent a storm. I'm on guard. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! The strength. Heaven search. Quick! Lands at the ready. I sense a storm. Heaven search. Price. That'll take more than medicine. That's better. Do not fret. Just, just a little something. Thank you. Thank you. Nice teamwork. I'm on guard. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Lands at the ready. Naughty child. Sense a storm. Heaven search. Just in time. Just a little something. Thank you. Thank you. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! 
The times are changed. Heaven search. I'm on guard. Did you really think you could stop us? Yeah, darn it. I'm all out of ammo. Sir, we've just received word from the director. Uh, director Topaz? What did she say? Teams are not to disrupt the lives of local inhabitants during the asset evaluation period. Teams that violate this directive will have their year-end bonuses reduced by 60%. 60%? Sixty percent? We're done for. Uh, attention all personnel. Evacuate the mine immediately. Erase all traces of your presence. <sighs> so, are we all good here, or what? <sighs> yeah. Judging by the looks on their faces, I don't think they'll be back. So, who is this Topaz anyway? She seems to have no problem ordering these idiots around. Or taming Fragmentum creatures, for that matter. It's a long story. Debt? What do you mean? You should probably ask Banya to explain it to you. Why did this mess have to happen so close to the festivities? The timing couldn't have been any worse. Oh, looks like we've got a message. Branya's worried about something. We'd better go back and see her. Are you coming with us, Zila? Go on without me. I still have stuff to take care of. The miners need to know what happened here. Branya messaged you, which means she thinks you can help. I trust her judgment. Got it, Zila. We'll do what we can to help Branya out. Come on, to Klipoth Fort! These guys don't look like these. By order of the Supreme Guardian, proceed no further, Miss Topaz. <sighs> Bellabog might be in arrears, but I'm out of pocket. See you later, Captain. I appreciate your help more than I can express. It couldn't have been easy running all over the city. <laughs> That's what friends are for, Branya. You don't sound like yourself. Is something wrong? Uh, I'm fine. I just... I haven't rested in a while. There's just too much happening all at once. Perhaps, but the IPC won't wait for me to catch up. They're moving quickly, 
Bellabog is crawling with their agents. All they talk about is asset evaluation. The silver lining is that apart from the mine incident you mentioned, there haven't been any major conflicts in other areas. I suppose Topaz must have issued an order against harassing the citizenry. Still, that hasn't stopped panic from building. People are confused. They don't know where these strangers in black came from, nor what their intentions are. Did you manage to get in touch with Topaz again? We're curious to know what solution she has in mind. That's the reason I asked for you to come here. I need your advice. Look. Uh, it's... The contract Topaz sent to me a little while ago. There's a handwritten letter attached. Please take a look at the contents. And then tell me your thoughts. Miss Branya. If you'll permit me to call you that, I'd like to share a story with you from my own life. In your eyes, the IPC may seem heartless or cruel, but in reality, we all have a story to tell. As for myself, I was born on a small, unremarkable planet at the edge of the galaxy, a place whose name is known only to the native inhabitants. My home planet was extremely resource poor. To survive, people worked laboriously, manufacturing products for other civilizations in the galaxy, mostly in chemical or heavy industries. Given these circumstances, the natural environment of my home planet became increasingly harsh. I don't recall the exact moment when it happened, but people started wearing respirators just to down the street. All you could hear were the wheezing coughs of the people, day and night. My home was facing its demise. The relatively wealthy chose interstellar migration and started anew. The majority who stayed could only struggle on amidst sewage, acid rain, and dust, waiting for the end. Finally, one fateful day, the IPC arrived on my home planet. They had the technology to repair our planet's damaged environment. In return for their help, they asked for just one thing, that all inhabitants sign a contract which would make them employees of the IPC. Two years after signing the contract, the dark clouds and haze disappeared, and people began to take off their masks. After three years, vegetation and trees began to grow and thrive again. After five years, many animals, previously on the brink of extinction, reappeared. When I was finally old enough, I officially became a member of the Strategic Investment Department. I witnessed the changes that took place on my home world and was determined to bring the same changes to many other worlds in the galaxy that were experiencing the same plight. I am writing to you, Miss Branya, with the genuine desire to express something important. I know freedom is precious to people, but in reality, there are things of much greater value, such as survival. How many generations of Bellabogians will it take to embrace the stars again without assistance? Who can guarantee that every future guardian will be as prudent and enlightened as you? How can you guarantee that a disaster such as the Stellaron Crisis will not descend upon Bellabog yet again? I have already negotiated the best possible deal for you. Once you sign this contract, all of Bellabog's debts will be forgiven. In addition, the IPC will set up a special team to support the reconstruction of Urillo 6. I can understand that for you, this is an extremely difficult decision because you and you alone will bear the fate of all Bellabogians. But because of this, I believe that you will make the right decision. 
a decision that will truly benefit your people. Her words do sound quite sincere. What do you make of it? I agree. But it struck me as an honest letter. I found the contents quite moving. It's hard to imagine she'd write something like this just to deceive me. In any case, she wasn't wrong when she said this would be an extremely difficult decision. This planet's fate, the civilization it carries, everything that's happened here and everything that will happen, it all rests in my hands. This definitely can't and shouldn't be a decision made by me alone. That thought has crossed my mind, and it comforts me to hear you say that. Right. I don't think it's fair for you to carry the weight alone. Why not discuss it with others first? Topaz hasn't given me much time to consider. She wants me to decide as soon as possible. I wanted to put it to a vote, and let all the citizens of both the Overworld and the Underworld have their say. But with such little time, I'm afraid that's a lost cause. I'll convene the Klopoth Fort Architects immediately to discuss the contract. As for the locals, I'd like you to gauge their stance on the matter. The people of Bellabog hold both of you in high regard. They'll most certainly be willing to tell you their thoughts. Yes, we need to move fast. We've got your back. We failed to convince Topaz, but this should be a piece of cake. Thank you, March. I'll assemble the ministers. Let's meet up here again later. All right. Uh, if we want to make an informed decision, we need to hear from both the Overworld and the Underworld, right? Let's start with the Overworld. Uh-oh. Sounds like something serious is happening. You'd better fill me in. What? How is that possible? I need a moment to wrap my head around this. Serval, we're racing against the clock. No time for head wrapping. Uh, it's okay. I've thought it through. If it were up to me, I'd sign the contract. What? Hold on, are you serious? I thought you'd be against it for sure. Surprised? My reasons are pretty simple. Signing this contract would mean we no longer have to worry about surviving. For most of the residents here, especially those in the underworld, that would be more than enough to persuade them. As for working for the company, <laughs> people need to work no matter where they are, right? If the IPC tries to take too many liberties, we can always rise up against them. You know, I've always longed for the stars since I was a child, which is why I devoted myself to science and the studying of the Stellaron. If someone told me that I could do whatever research I wanted with only a small price to pay, I probably wouldn't hesitate. I suppose that makes sense. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. We meet again. How have you two been? Uh-oh. That look 
on your face tells me something's wrong. I hope it's nothing too serious. Sounds serious. I'm all ears. Really? You better not be making things up. I wish it were made up. Unfortunately, it's all true. We don't have much time, Pela. Branya wants to get everyone's opinion. Wait, you're telling me I have to make this huge decision on the spot? At least give me a few seconds to think it over. <sighs> okay, I think I've got it. If it were up to me, I'd probably agree to the IPC's conditions. Huh. Okay. Any particular reason? I've looked at some of the climate reports, and based on the data I've seen, it'll take three or four more generations for the snow to completely subside. And that's assuming no other disasters occur. I care more about those in the present than a future I can't be sure of. If the IPC is able to bring about immediate change, then I think that's a price well worth paying. Building a better world for future generations sounds great, right? But is it any fun for the engineers and architects who are directly involved in such a pursuit? I see. So compared to a distant and uncertain future, what you really care about is making sure the people around you have a good life. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. Is that the Trailblazers? It's been a while. I didn't think you'd be back in Bellabox so soon. It's been pretty hectic in the city lately. All these people dressed in black suddenly showed up, and even the Silvermane Guards have had trouble dealing with them. Do you need my opinion? I'm happy to help. So that's who they are. It's worse than I imagined. The Madam Guardian must be under a lot of pressure. Is there really nothing we can do to assist her? We are here to gather everyone's opinion on the matter. I know this is a little sudden, but we're running out of time. What's your take? Why, I'd refuse the contract, of course. There is no room for compromise. Just look at them. Arrogant, stomping around here as if they own the place. How can such people be trusted? Who's to say they won't breach the contract? Faced with this sort of coercion, we must resist them with all our might. Surrendering is not an option. You must warn the Madam Guardian not to allow herself to fall into their trap. A soldier's perspective is always valuable, Dunn. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. Did we miss anyone in the overworld? I think we asked just about everyone we needed to. From what I've gathered, it seems like most people in the overworld are leaning towards signing the IPC's contract. <sighs> We'd better hurry to the underworld and see what Natasha and Zila make of it all. It's getting late. Where to now? What brings you two to the underworld? And why the long face? Seems a little out of the blue, but since you came all this way, it must be urgent. Go ahead. <sighs> that is a lot of information to take in. Sorry, both of you. I know you're in a hurry, but I need a moment to think. No stress, Nat. 
Just tell us what you really think. <sighs> I've thought about it, and... Well, if I were Branya, I wouldn't sign it. I won't deny the offer on the table is a very tempting one. And if we refuse, Bellabog will not only have the burden of a huge debt, we may also incite the wrath of a very powerful force. But even so, a quote I read back in school came to me just now. Those who are willing to give up freedom for security will end up with neither. Living in the underworld has taught me that this phrase is true. I'd rather trek through the frigid snow plains than live in a beautiful cage. Wow, that's a pretty convincing argument. Another vote for the against pile. Thanks for your insight, Nat. <laughs> None other than the saviors of Bellabog. To what do I owe the pleasure? To be honest, I'm surprised you even remembered an old geezer like me. <laughs> but I can tell by the look on your faces you're probably not dropping by to say hi. Let me guess. Something to do with these unruly people in black showing up everywhere? Well, ask away. It just so happens I'm curious about them myself. Maybe I can be of some help. I see. That's a tricky situation, all right. A lot for anyone to handle, let alone someone as young as Lady Bronya. Mr. Oleg, out of all the people we know in Bellabog, you have the most life experience. What do you think we should do? Want to hear the truth? I'm afraid great ambitions and lofty plans no longer hold much appeal for an old-timer like me. If this IPC does indeed possess the magical power to restore Bellabog back to its former self overnight, then I think the answer is clear. Have you considered the opposite? What about if we refuse? The reconstruction plan already sounds like an endless endeavor. And with the added burden of a massive debt, well, is that something we can manage on our own? What worries me the most is how Lady Bronya will handle the backlash from her people. Will she be able to withstand the criticism? Is she prepared to carry the weight of a tarnished reputation for years to come? I think so too, but... Could you imagine having to hear names? Like the traitorous ruler for the rest of your life? Thank you for your thoughts, Mr. Oleg. Another vote for the four pile. Underworld. Hey there, Clara. Uh, is Sparog not around? Mr. Sparog went out for a walk with a lady called Topaz. What? Topaz? Do you know where they went? Uh, I'm not sure, but Mr. Sparog promised he'd be back soon. Uh, what now? Sparog's super logical. We should definitely get his opinion. True. Don Hung's always saying that Clara's really insightful for her age. Huh? Miss March, do you want to ask me something? Hmm. Uh, that's complicated. I don't know what to say. It's all right, Clara. No pressure. Just tell us how you feel about it. Hmm... I... I think if we have a choice for the future, 
It should be everyone's decision. Because when I was playing with Hook, the moles, and the other kids, we talked about our dreams. Everyone has different dreams. If we accept Miss Topaz's offer, then doesn't that mean our dreams will never come true? Just taking away people's dreams like that. I don't know. It feels wrong. You're right. Children see the world as a place where anything is possible. Oh, just the thought of our lives being predestined from birth makes me shiver. Thanks, Clara. Your thoughts mean a lot to us. <sighs> All that running around has worn me out. So, the final conclusion is... The votes are completely even! Uh, I don't know what to do. Both sides have really compelling arguments. Alright! We have an Asila! She's probably still in the Great Mine helping the miners. Come on, let's get going! so soon? Any news? Are, are you feeling all right? You look a little uneasy. <sighs> Important matter, huh? I can tell from your tone that this isn't gonna be a lighthearted chat. But I'm ready to hear it. <sighs> I... I think I get it. First, I thought it was just a few IPC ruffians overstepping their boundaries. Yeah, you didn't think the future of Bellabog was at stake, right? Right. I... I need a little time to process this. As it stands, the votes are even. Your opinion will make all the difference. <sighs> In that case... I... I abstain. What? No. This responsibility rests on Branya's shoulders. Not mine. No matter the choice she makes, she has far greater foresight than I do. She can see the bigger picture more clearly than I can. The vote is tied. If I were to give you my view, it would tip the scales and possibly impact her final choice. I'll respect whatever decision she makes, but it's not my place to make it for her. Understood, Zila. This is a difficult decision to make, and everyone feels differently about it. It's times like these that a leader must stand up and do what's needed. Right. It's Branya's decision. She knows what's at stake. She won't run away from her duty. I trust her wholeheartedly. If she asks you, just let her know my reasoning. She'll understand. Uh, well, it's all in Branya's hands now. She has to make the final call. Bellabog has someone like her in charge. Uh, the time has come. Let's go fill her in. I'm curious to see how she's handling those Klopoth ministers. It's getting late. Where to now? The fort's packed! I've never seen 
this many people here before. Oh, jeez, I can barely even hear myself think. We're doomed. What are these things doing? doing? March, you're back. So, what's the verdict? What do the people think? We talked to people in both the overworld and the underworld. The final result was a tie. Uh, I see. I suppose everyone has their own way of seeing things. I can't say I'm surprised. What was Zila's perspective on the matter? I should have known. That sounds like Zila, all right. Did you come to a conclusion with the ministers? Oh, it's so loud I can't tell what anyone's saying. It's pretty much the same situation here. Neither party is willing to compromise. The time has come to make a decision. This chaos cannot be allowed to continue any longer. All of you! I know what to do. Wait! I have something to say to the Supreme Guardian. Uh, but... Uh, aren't you... Real you or a hologram? <laughs> it's the real me, March. Real as they come. Miss Himiko from the Astral Express? I. It's an honor. Thank you for all your help in our previous campaign. Things might have turned out differently without your support. If we had known of your arrival beforehand, the Architects would have given you a proper welcome. I'm afraid the current circumstances are quite exceptional. I understand, Miss Rania. No need to explain. Your city is facing immense difficulties. My intention is simply to ensure that you have all the relevant intel. I hesitate to call it a solution, but I might have some information that might help. It is my hope that with this information, you will be better equipped as the Supreme Guardian to make a wise and informed decision. Information? Please, tell me what you know, Miss Himiko. I happen to have a friend with knowledge of Topaz. What Topaz said about her home world is indeed true, which is why she believes that the IBC's takeover of Bellabog is the only way of ensuring the city's survival. But there is one thing she intentionally left out. Not all worlds that have accepted the IBC's terms have been saved. Eve? Performing ecological reconstruction on a planet carries inevitable risks. According to the intel provided by my friend, the success rate for the ecological reconstruction of worlds using the IBC's technology is 63%. Only 63% of planets succeed? That's not exactly comforting. This is the overall average across all IPC projects. The success rate of projects personally handled by Topaz is above 80%. She's undoubtedly one of the most capable people in her field. I wanted to bring these numbers, these probabilities, to light. I think it's only fair that you know all the facts before making a decision. Ultimately, it's up to you, Supreme Guardian, to make the final call. Thank you, Miss Himiko. This information is of great help. Regardless of how alluring their promises may be, 
This contract is nothing more than a gamble. As a leader, I cannot let the future of Bellabog hinge on a roll of the dice. Now that you've decided, I don't have to pretend to be impartial anymore. I think you're making the right choice, Branya. Astro friends, I have an idea, but for it to work, I'll need everyone's cooperation. I need some time to rally all the residents in the city, and then I'll meet with Topaz again. Please locate her for me. It doesn't matter where she is or what she's doing. And if the IPC is still trying to take over Bellabog's assets, I ask that you do everything in your power to stop them. Don't worry. Leave it to us. We'll find her. It won't be easy dealing with her, but these two will help me get the job done. Bellabog's future is not for sale. And we'll never forget the friends who stood by us in our time of need. Not once, but twice. Stay safe, everyone. for us in Rivet Town, right? Here we go again. Back to our old stomping grounds for another adventure. It's getting late. Where to now? He really said that to me. The Supreme Guardian has briefed me on the situation and asked that I assist you in locating Topaz. Ready to enter Rivet Town? We'll go in together when everyone is set. Keep your guards up. We might run into IPC agents ahead.
destination reached. Wow, would you look at that. Huh. I never would have guessed it'd be here. But I don't see any mech or weapons. This place is completely surrounded by mountains. Surely they, they can't be. Affirmative. The weapons are concealed within the towering rock formations. No wonder we couldn't find the automaton factory. It was right under our noses all along. Wait a minute. You said these weapons have been hidden here from the very beginning? That means the architects of Urillo 6 never used them in their fight against the Legion. Correct. After the IPC departed from this world more than 700 years ago, no one has possessed the necessary knowledge for activating these weapons. The architects used the IPC blueprints to construct replica automatons. However, the overwhelming majority of the combatants, commanded by Elisa Rand, were human. I see. The stories about this world are truly captivating. I would like to ask you a question, Topaz. <laughs> You're awful polite for a big robot. Ask. Don't be shy. If the IPC does not intervene, this world is doomed. Are you convinced of this conclusion beyond any doubt? <sighs> yes. I've gone through countless case studies and they all point to the same conclusion. Any world that comes into contact with Estelaron is doomed. On the surface, things may appear to be getting better since the Astral Express lent a helping hand. But sooner or later, the underlying problems will resurface. A looming crisis can often lie hidden beneath the illusion of prosperity, unnoticed by many. Understood. Understood. That's it? You don't have any thoughts on the matter? Emotional readings indicate that your response is sincere and accurate. That is all I wish to confirm regarding this matter. While my opinion on the future of this planet may differ from yours, it ultimately holds no weight. I am merely a tool, not a decision maker. <laughs> If only my colleagues had the same self-awareness as you. Come on, Numbi. We've got some assessing to do. Topaz disappeared after leaving Rivet Town. In her absence, her subordinates flooded in and took over. The IPC soldiers are well equipped. It wouldn't be wise to fight them head on. Captain, what do you have in mind? You're right, Miss Himiko. We'll be using the automaton stealth bomb to cover our tracks. Automaton stealth bomb? I'll explain later. Let's get moving. Keep noise to a minimum, everyone. We don't want to alert the enemy to our presence. It's time to deploy the automaton stealth bomb. Are you ready? Use the automaton stealth bomb to wipe out the IPC threats. Remember, try to avoid being noticed. Remaining hidden will increase our chances of success.
what you call efficiency. It's a shame we had to resort to this method, but we had no choice. Uh, you Silvermane guards sure are a righteous bunch. I've seen standard issue robots like these before. It's an IPC field team leader. Correct. The exterior is similar to the Grizzly, but its weapons and armor are more advanced. Hopefully the automaton stealth bomb will still be effective. Let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Use the automaton stealth bomb to wipe out the IPC threats. Remember, try to avoid being noticed. Remaining hidden will increase our chances of success. To be honest, I didn't think it would be so powerful. Good thing everything went according to plan. This is the road that Topaz took when she left Rivet Town. Let's find her and tell her about Branya's decision. Outsiders, system functions are normal. I have had no conflict with the IPC's representatives. Such a result would be highly undesirable. Topaz is ahead. She had the means to force me to comply with her orders, but chose not to. From her perspective, the only way to preserve Bellabod is by incorporating it into the IPC while I do not agree with her viewpoint, I lack the computational power to provide evidence to the contrary. While it is unlikely, I still encourage the avoidance of any potential conflicts. Unlikely potential? Meaning there could still be conflicts. Don't worry, March. The Express never pursues conflict as a first means. But if it comes down to it, we won't back down either. That's how it's always been. Himeko's right. As long as we can look at ourselves in the mirror and know we did the right thing, that's all that matters. And why would Topaz come here? Is she looking for something? It's possible. Many mysteries lurk beneath the surface of this world. Oh, 
Oh, hey there, slowpokes. I was starting to think you weren't gonna show up. Hmm. This lady next to Miss March looks oddly familiar. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Topaz. I'm Himiko, the Astral Express's navigator. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember now. The illustrious Miss Himiko. <laughs> Some of my colleagues dream about meeting you. Of course, the Nameless have quite the reputation. You're following in the footsteps of the great Akavili, after all. I'm pleased to see how well everyone's been getting along. Topaz, based on your greeting, I presume you have a good grasp of the current situation? Of course! The deadline has already passed, but Branya still hasn't signed the contract. I think I can guess what's holding her back. Please, don't misunderstand us, Miss Topaz. We have no intention of opposing the IPC or its board of directors, but we have very dear friends on your Willow Six. S standing idly by and watching them sign an unfair contract goes against everything the Nameless are about. Um, Miss Himeko, sorry for interrupting, but this doesn't sound like a negotiation. We needn't waste our time, March. She made her decision 10 minutes ago. <laughs> There's no fooling the Astral Express. <sighs> You're absolutely right. Differing views don't necessarily mean one person is right and the other is wrong. However, to keep things moving forward, there's usually only one solution. My superiors have granted me the approval I need. <laughs> You're very curious about my work, aren't you? So many eager faces. I won't keep you in the dark any longer. Approval to launch an attack on the members of the Astral Express. The best kept secret to getting something over the line? Always be ready to turn the table. Go, Numby. <laughs> Projects under my wing have no room for error. Ready. 
Be revealed. In the lunar flame. The times are changed. Heaven search. Christ. Inevitable. Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. Time. The strength. Heaven search. Break. Naughty child. Just, Just a little something. Save it for your own skin. Lands at the ready. Will be revealed. In the lunar flame. Awaken dormant scales. Dragon. <laughs> Stand down. the ready. Just a little something. Save it for your own skin. No. All will be revealed. In the lunar flame. Heaven search. Finally. 
these endless... Lance the blaze. Lance! Forward! That'll take more than medicine. The strength. Heaven search. Break. Awaken dormant scales. Blood cleansing dragon. Sense a storm. Heaven search. Rise. I'm on guard. Get. Naughty child. That's better. Do not fret. The ready. Just, just a little something. Thank you. Nice teamwork. <laughs> Lance a blaze. Lance! Forward! Sense a storm. I'm on guard. <laughs> the strength. Heaven search. <laughs> That'll take more than medicine. <laughs> Just a little something. Thank you. Sense a storm. <laughs> Lands at the ready. Guard. <laughs> Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Naughty child. Scratch. 
That'll take more than medicine. Just in time. Just a little something. Think nothing of you. Nice teamwork. I sense a storm. Heaven search. Surprise. Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> Conflict requires undivided focus. <laughs> Do not fret. Just in time. Just a little something. Thank you. Lamps ablaze. Search. Break. Naughty child. Take more than medicine. That's better. <laughs> Just, Just a little something. Think of you. Nice teamwork. <laughs> that hurts. I sense a storm. The Astral Express is so highly regarded. Finished warming up? Now it's my turn. Stop! All of you, put down your weapons! Uh, Branya! Oh, you're here just in time. Things were about to get out of control. Uh, Supreme Guardian. I was starting to wonder whether you'd left the Express crew to fend for themselves. <laughs> That would hardly be becoming of you. I would never do such a thing. There was an important matter that required my attention. Uh, more important than this? Yes. I think you'll understand the significance once you see it. In short, I need you to help us evaluate our current progress. Help you? Hmm. That's interesting. I was under the impression you'd already decided to obstruct our operations here. I have read your letter word for word, Miss Topaz. And your childhood experiences truly touched me. Your hometown once experienced a similar catastrophe to Yarillo 6. So I can understand your perspective on the issue and the position you have taken. It's because of this empathy you have that I still hold out a glimmer of hope. Despite all that's happened, I hope we can still find common ground through peaceful means. 
I have to admit, talking to you is always such a pleasure. I apologize for my behavior just now. It, it was uh, inappropriate. I admire your determination, seeing as we've come uh, this far. I've changed my mind. I'll hold off a little longer and see what you have to show me. But remember, winning over the higher-ups won't be easy. I understand. That's why I've been taking things one step at a time. The first step was changing your mind. Members of the Express, we'll need your help too. dismal sight. This district. Have you been here before? Yes. This is where we put an end to it all. And then began again. That's right. Kyle, sorry for the delay. Are we clear to proceed? The path ahead is clear, Madam Guardian. You and your companions can proceed north without hindrance. Excellent. The mountain road ahead is a little treacherous. Watch your step. Let's go. What is this place? We've never been here before, right? We've only recently discovered this domain. Let's keep moving forward. What I want to show you is just ahead. Do you recognize that broken down machine over there? I thought you might. Miss Topaz, I know you've done a lot of research into Bellabog. I was wondering if there was any information on the engine of creation in your records? Not at all. Which is why I find it so incredible. Such a massive feat of engineering, yet there's not a single mention of it in any of the Strategic Investment Department's reports. I may know the reason why. The engine of creation was constructed solely by the people of Bellabog without any external assistance. The project was led by the first Supreme Guardian, Alyssa Rand. While warriors fought on the front lines, the engineers worked tirelessly behind the scenes, designing and constructing it. So what you're saying is, the engine of creation was a weapon constructed by the Balabogians themselves? Yes, but not entirely. The engine of creation was commissioned for combat shortly after its completion, and played a significant role in the battles against the Legion. Alyssa Rand had a long-term vision, one that nobody anticipated. For a long time, this feat of engineering was codenamed the Geological Reconstruction Unit. It was actually given a much grander purpose, to help the Bellabogians rebuild their homeland and restore their world to its former glory after driving away all those who threatened it. Remarkable. A vision that would transcend both time and generations of Bellabogians. Madame 
Rand was truly an inspiring leader. I, not to take away from the Supreme Guardian in front of me. <laughs> She's quite the inspiring leader as well. Ah, uh, thank you. But I didn't really do anything. All I did was bring the people of Bellabog together and make them aware that our hard-earned freedom was under immense threat once again. If we want to preserve this freedom, we must act and show those who doubt us that we, Bellabog, have the will and the ability to control our own destiny. The outcome of our mobilization speaks for itself. The children of Bellabog have made their decision. They have chosen to preserve this homeland with their own two hands. I must say, I didn't anticipate this at all. <sighs> I'll fight for this opportunity for you, Branya. I shouldn't have conflated your own circumstances with my childhood. That was a serious lapse of judgment on my part. My world never had a resolute leader, so people gave up on the idea of saving themselves long ago. But your civilization has persisted through the snow and storms for 700 years. A truly admirable feat. Then, are you willing to retract your previous decision? As for the debt, we'll find a way to gradually repay it. But it'll take some time. Unfortunately, the acquisition of Urillo 6 is a strategic decision that's been approved by the IPC's top brass. Even if I wanted to overturn it, convincing them would be extremely difficult. Unless... Don't worry, Miss Topaz. Myself and all of the Nameless aboard the Astral Express are willing to vouch for this world. <laughs> Fantastic. That might just work. As for the uh, reports and potential accountability... <sighs> I'll handle it. Solution is always the best solution. Uh, speaking of solutions, are they repairing that giant robot? The one we fought against? I remember you took control of it and helped us defeat Kakolia. Miss Topaz is definitely up to the job. She has that aura of. Oh, what's the word? Invincibility. <laughs> Well, we didn't get to enjoy the festivities this time around. But at least we still got to meet a top IPC executive! You know, <laughs> I'd heard you and March speak highly of the Supreme Guardian before. But seeing her methods firsthand left me in awe. We should also be glad that Ms. Topaz is the one in charge of the Urillo 6 project. If it were someone else from the Strategic Investment Department, things might have gotten... complicated. The Strategic Investment Department comprises the IPC's most elite employees, many of whom can be very... forceful. Let's talk about this later, when you're back on the Express. You and Marge must be tired after such an incredible journey. It's time you got some well-deserved rest. Miss Topaz, you mentioned accountability. Uh, don't worry, it's it's nothing I can't handle. 
there are more important things than titles and ranks. Finding the best solution is what matters most. <laughs> That's unlikely. At most, they might just lower my rank and reduce my bonus a bit. But don't worry, I work for far more than just a paycheck. Thank you so much for all you've done. I never thought we'd drag the Express into a crisis again. Much less one that might cause a rift between you and the IPC. A rift? I wouldn't go that far. Also, it's me who's mostly to blame. I didn't keep my subordinates in check. <laughs> Seventeen... Oh! I think I might know who you're talking about. Uh, you could say he's, um special case. For most people, the interview process is much shorter. <laughs> I'm glad we're able to discuss some lighter topics. Well, you all need some rest after everything you've been through. I have arranged rooms for you all at the Goethe Hotel. Miss Topaz, if you need somewhere comfortable to stay. Ah, I appreciate the offer, but... I need to head back and deliver my reports. It's been great getting to know you both. I hope we can work together again in the future. Only next time under better circumstances. It's getting late. Where to now? I've been wondering... How did you figure out what was happening here on Bellabog, Himeko? <laughs> well, you know, keeping an eye on the crew is just another part of a navigator's job. March was looking forward to the Soulworm Festival for ages. Looks like she's missed her chance this time. I never thought this trip would be so... <sighs> tiring. <sighs> time for bed. In light of the events that have transpired, we will be taking the following disciplinary measures against you. Your rank will be demoted from P45 to P44 with corresponding adjustment to your basic salary. All bonuses for the current cycle will be revoked, including stock options and performance bonuses. You will need to submit an additional report regarding this incident to Diamond. If you have any objections to this penalty, you may also file an appeal in writing. Understood. Is there anything else anyone would like to add? If there are no further remarks, this meeting is concluded. <laughs> oh, you only got demoted one rank? Phew! You dodged a bullet there. Pretty big project to mess up on. Someone must be looking out for you. Oh, they've already left the call. Oh, this voice changer is driving me crazy. Let me turn it off. Adventurine, why are you still on the line? Hey, what's with the hostility? It's not like I'm your boss. Oh, wait. I guess I am now. 
<laughs> my apologies. I'm still getting used to my new place in the hierarchy. Can I help you? If you've got something to say, say it already. Oh, nothing important. Just checking in on you. I told you Urillo 6 would be a high-risk, low-reward case. Why do you even bother? In our line of work, having a kind heart can be more of a liability than an asset. If you're not careful, you'll end up leading yourself down a dead-end road. Anything else? If not, I'm hanging up. Wait. Hold on a minute. Don't hang up. I get it. You're not in the mood for this conversation right now. Okay. How about this? Something that might interest you. While you were enjoying your playtime on Urillo 6, Diamond was busy taking care of the head honcho of the Building Material Logistics Department. That's why he didn't attend today's meeting. A... Terravan? That's right. The renowned Terravan. One of the seven board members. He's throwing his support behind us instead of the Marketing Development Department for once. <laughs> Oswaldo won't be laughing anymore. Diamond's been a great help to both of us. Your antics on such a crucial day can't exactly have painted the Strategic Investment Department in a good light, you know? <laughs> Since you get the point, let's get down to business. I'm currently at Pierpoint. There's a major deal that could affect the whole department. I just so happen to need a reliable project manager for the job. What do you say, old friend? Huh. And what prompted the mighty Aventurine to start collaborating with others? Panagoni. What else? What? <laughs> that's right. Now that's the kind of reaction I was hoping for. Uh, hold on a minute. Diamond picked you for this project? I, I was expecting someone like Opal or uh, Obsidian to handle it. At least someone higher than rank P46. Honestly, who knows? The family has some pretty questionable characters. If you ask me, doing business with them is a lost cause. But as we both know, the IPC does more than just business deals. Guess it's my time to shine. So, how about it? This is a rare opportunity. Consider it. You never know, you might even be able to make up for your blunder on your Rillo 6. Uh, I'll get back to you later. <sighs> Seems like it's just one wild ride after another. I hope I made the right decision this time. <laughs> the snow is mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> 